Welcome to this video tutorial on how to add vegetation to a scene in Twinmotion. I'm currently working with this scene here where we set up a nice water material and some different materials on my landscape and building in the distance. If you want to see how I set this scene up originally, I'll put a link in the description to the video where I initially set this scene up, which was imported from my Rhino model here. Now I want to add some trees and some landscape features to this to kind of increase the idea of vegetation and add some kind of landscape properties to this image. So in this video we're going to go through a few tips on how you can do that in Twinmotion. To start with we're going to go into the library and we're going to find the vegetation under this vegetation tab here. Here you can find trees, landscape, bushes, flowers, rocks, etc. All the kind of things you want to preload into your scene. And the great thing with Twinmotion is they've got a huge variety of different trees that you can just drop straight into your file. So you don't have to kind of download them from elsewhere. You can just drag and drop them straight into your scene. For example, if we took this Austrian pine here, I could just take that, click and drag, and I can drop it into my scene and it's already been textured and rendered in my scene like so. So really easy to start to kind of populate your scene with different vegetation. Now there are a few ways you can add lots of vegetation in one go into your scenes and we're going to go through a couple of the ways to do this. So if you select your kind of ground plate here which is my surface and I'm just going to kind of zoom out slightly um, and just pan around so we can kind of see this from above like so. Let's just zoom in a little bit on here so we can see a bit more of this landscape. Now let's say we want to kind of populate this landscape with our Austrian pine here. Twinmotion has a few different tools we can use to start to populate a landscape or a place with vegetation and that can be found under the populate tab here. Under here you'll see under place we've got these four options, paint, scatter, spacing and area and I'm going to quickly go through what each of these does and how you can kind of use them best in your scenes. To start with we'll look at the scatter option and if you select it here it will ask you to drop a model to start painting it. So I'm going to take my Austrian pine, we're going to click and drag and we're just going to drop it into that window like so. From there I'm going to select that tree, hit the paint bucket tool down here and we're just going to click on my landscape to scatter it. And here you can see it's just scattered it uniformly over this landscape. Now this is great if you've just got a big plain landscape you want to uniformly scatter over but obviously I've got this water texture here and because I haven't split my kind of terrain up it's going in the water, it's going on the land, it doesn't really differentiate between the two. The other thing with this particular setting is you'll see that we can't actually change the density of this, there's no kind of parameters to add more trees. If you want to do that you need to go back to the paint bucket and click again on the landscape to add a kind of another round of selection. And I find it's a little bit clunky, it's kind of not super easy to refine the exact number you want from there. So I don't often use this scatter tool when doing things like trees which need very specific height tweaking and monitoring in that way. Um, one other thing with this is you can select all your trees here and we can tweak the age of them which will actually tweak the size as well. So you can see we can scroll through the age which is quite a useful feature there. But I found some of the other scattering tools are slightly better in terms of fine tuning that exact number and rotation of trees you want. So let's just delete that one and instead we'll go back to the populate tab and I'm going to have a look at spacing and area and then we're going to look at paint at the end. So spacing very similar works in the same way that you just drag your tree into the box here but instead of a kind of paint bucket we've got this little pen tool and what we can do is we can actually just start to draw out a line and I'm just going to sort of draw it around and then connect it back where I started and what you'll find there is you'll get these trees placed along that line in a uniform pattern. Here we've got the sort of a number of trees by count that we can up if we want so we can have more trees along that line we can offset them slightly as well we can also offset the scale so I can add a random scale to them so they're slightly kind of placed in a random way we can add a random rotation to them as well so it spins them around slightly so you see here we've got slightly more kind of options we can play around with once we place these so we can fine-tune the kind of spacing of those trees a little bit more the kind of area tool works in a very similar way so what we can do is if I just delete these again go back to populate this time go to area drop in my Austrian pine again this time we're just going to draw a quick area there and again you can see we've got the spacing of the trees here 
we've got the kind of random spacing, we've got probability of them placed. So we've got lots of these kind of fine tune settings that we can start to set in there as well. And they will just be located in the area that you draw. So those are the kind of first three population tools and they're all quite useful just for sort of adding your geometry in in different ways, populating your scenes with both trees and other natural objects you might want. Now the last of these is the paint tool and I find this one most useful when adding in things like trees, plants and natural objects. The way this works is again we just drag our asset in, click on that paint tool, click on the paintbrush down here and we can set the diameter of our paintbrush and then all we need to do is just begin to kind of paint here. You'll see that it's just placing trees wherever I paint. Now you'll see that some places it's not painting them. This is to do with the density setting. So if we go back, click on our object here, we've got this little density tab and the higher we make that density, the more it fills in our paint area. You can also see it's got this kind of flashing light green sort of speckled dots that indicates exactly where we've painted. So we can then go back if we want to, we can paint in more here. Let's do some up the side there and maybe around the back. And we can also use this eraser tool for taking any out. So maybe I don't want that tree there, maybe that tree I don't want. So you can actually kind of fine tune exactly where you want to place these. Now usually what I'll do is I'll paint them in like so and then I'll go back to my view and have a look and see if it's worked. And you can kind of see here this tree's right in the middle of where my building is so I kind of don't want that. So if you want to go back and edit them, I'm just going to go back to the move tool here. I'm going to select my trees, make sure we've got that kind of painted vegetation coming up and we can hit that eraser tool there and then I can just go in in my view and start to erase specifically erase certain trees. And I think maybe I'll pick out that one at the back there. You might not be able to reach it when you're in this tool, so you might need to kind of back out the tool and add it in a certain way. But we can start to then kind of fine tune and just pick and choose where we want those trees to be placed. So I feel like the paint tool is the most versatile when doing this kind of vegetation. And we can use it not just for trees, but for other vegetation as well. So if I go back, we can go to rocks this time and I can start to paint in some rocks as well. So if we go back, back to the paint tool, and drag that in, I can then start to paint on these surfaces with those rocks. Now you'll see when painting and when I've got something like water here on this edge, it's very easy to accidentally just paint on the surface of the water. And that doesn't really make sense with the rocks I've got because I want those to be kind of under the water on the terrain. So what I'm gonna do when working with rocks like this, and if we drag them back into that paint object, I'm actually gonna just scroll through my layers and because I've sort of set everything up in folders, I'm just gonna turn that water off and then I'm gonna paint those rocks in. So let's go in, I'm gonna paint them up here. Just kind of trying to paint them across that surface like so. Let's have a few up on the top there, some maybe behind the building, a few up here as well. Then let's play around back on those rocks with that density parameter, just up that slightly. I'm going to then take the eraser as well and let's just reduce that down in some key places. A couple of bits there just to make it a bit patchier. Like so. And then we can then go and add that water back in. And you'll see that we've got this kind of blend where some of them dip below the surface of that water now. So we don't have this weird kind of floating rock texture on top of the water. Now you'll find with the painting, it's good, but it can look a little bit uniform. So often what I'll do is once I've done a bit of painting and we've added some kind of objects in, I'm then just gonna zoom in slightly. So I'm gonna do that just by focusing on this object here, roll it around so we can kind of see this shoreline a bit better. And then I'm gonna take some of these other features. So let's grab maybe this rock here, and I'm just gonna click and drag and drop it in. And actually, you can get away with just sort of dropping a few of these in freehand. And these are quite nice just as a way to break up some of that repetition. So I'm gonna add a couple of these in the foreground. We can always hit that scale tool, scale them up if we want to as well. Rotate them round if needed as well. So you can start to use it just to break up this surface slightly. And I'm just gonna drag a few of these in and just use it to just break up 
the repetition of this surface. So all I'm doing is just trying to kind of build up a kind of nice arrangement of these rocks along the surface of my model. Drag one in there. Maybe let's add one up here on this hillside. Scale it up a little bit. Similar down here. Like this one. You might almost want to kind of move it just below the surface of the water as well. Maybe we'll add one of these out here but move it down slightly so it's kind of slightly in the water make it a bit bigger there as well so you can start playing around and really trying to arrange these to kind of suit your scene and the particular look that you're going for and always good when doing this so you might add a few but then you always want to go back to your viewpoint to check that it's looking good in that particular view you're doing it might be that certain ones are kind of standing out a little bit too much so i'm just going to take that just going to lower it down slightly. So I'm making and sort of tailoring these objects to kind of suit my scene rather than letting that kind of dictate it. So once you've kind of done those, we've got now a nice spread of trees and a spread of rocks here as well. What I'll then usually do is start to add a little bit of variation in there. So we've got our kind of mature trees here. Maybe you want some slightly smaller ones kind of put in between those. So perhaps let's kind of have a little look through maybe this kind of little leaf here we're going to add in so you might add this in just manually or you might want to use that paint tool again the nice thing is we can drop it in if we select it then we can always go back tweak the age sometimes the nice thing with this is you have a few on a paint layer and then a few that are just individual objects that gives you that little bit more kind of control over their exact placement of them kind of where they sit in relation to other things in the scene as well. So let's take another one of these. We'll drop one over there. Let's go back to the view, see how that looks. And we'll just start to fill in some of these points here and we'll just lower the age of some of these. So they're just adding a bit of variation. So you'll find with this, we're kind of tweaking it particularly for the view that I'm making. So I'm trying to make the kind of view look as good as possible from this angle. That's why it's important to always set up your camera first hand. That way you can kind of align things to the view and allow the view to kind of look as good as it can be rather than kind of setting them all up and then finding you turn on your camera and it doesn't look very nice from that particular view. Now the kind of last thing I'm going to add are some sort of lower bushes and plants in here. We've got kind of ferns, we've got other things in. I'm going to use the paint again to do this. I'm going to go back to populate, make sure we're set on paint. I'm going to select this kind of common fern or some of these other ferns that are down here maybe this one here like so and then we're just going to start to paint it and lower that diameter a little bit down there and paint it in the gaps here and we'll just do a bit here a bit there and again with all of these i'm just trying to be quite selective with where i'm putting them so we're really just sort of filling in some of the gaps but it's not like this whole kind of plant is taking it over slightly and then we'll just up the density a bit in these places. The best way of kind of working with all of these pieces is just having a real mixture of things. So I'm kind of mixing with bushes, with trees, with kind of large scale trees, small scale sort of bushes as well. Let's drag in this kind of maple, could be nice here as well. This is a much smaller scale plant. So you've got a real kind of variety going on. It's not like anything is sort of taking over too much. And that way, as you kind of render it out, you'll find that you've got a good mix of all of your objects in the scene together. As a final touch, I'm also gonna add some lily pads to the surface of this water and a few rocks that sit a little bit further out into the lake. To do this, I'm gonna to go to the bushes tab here. I'm gonna scroll right down to the bottom where we can find these water lilies. And again, I'm just gonna use that paint setting, dragging the water lilies in there and just painting it on the surface of this water. And I'm gonna do this from my camera view so we can kind of see how this sits on there. And usually I'll just sort of paint this in. We can also use the other ones if we want to. So once we've set those, you'll find these are slightly less kind of frequent, they're less dense than the other water lilies. So I'm gonna bring those in and paint a few of those as well, just by tapping here a little bit on that edge. And then as a final touch, let's just go back to the rocks. I'm gonna use this first rock I used again. I'm gonna drag some out here. Let's scale them up a little bit. 
I found if you scale them up and then just take the z-axis and scale them down in that axis it's quite nice makes them a bit flatter and then you can put them just below the surface um, you might need to just focus in on them a bit rotate them around depending on your kind of camera view maybe we sort of move them slightly further into the distance as well and then we'll go back to the view see how that looks it's kind of working there as well and you can also add in one more if we need to just to sort of build up that scene in the foreground a bit so it's not all just happening in the background so there we have our kind of completed scene where we've added in these different layers of vegetation from water lilies to trees rocks plants once we've got all of those in place we can also under our kind of media tab go back to our environment whether it might be that you actually want to make it a kind of windier day and the nice thing with this is that all the trees will respond to that as well so you could up the wind speed and you'll see if i do then we'll see these trees start swaying in the background slightly i do find with this that the kind of water lilies and the waves are a little bit intense so usually i keep that a little bit lower but the nice thing is with this that all of these elements kind of work in combination with each other so you can create these really kind of detailed and rich environments one thing you can always do as well is if you're not quite happy with some of the sizing of things you can always go back and tweak again the age or the size of these trees so everything is kind of goes back to those root settings which allows you to then go and customize things make things smaller make things taller if you need to as well so you have a lot of kind of functionality for just playing around with the specific sizes of each of these elements. So I hope you found this video tutorial on how to add some vegetation into your scenes in Twinmotion. Um, for other videos on both Twinmotion, other rendering packages within Rhino, and ways of creating drawings and visuals in Rhino and Twinmotion and V-Ray, please do check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.